what do you do when you're trying to solve a system of differential equations and your eigenvalues are repeated? In other words, when you try to solve the eigenvalue equations, uh, you end up with some solutions with multiplicities. Well, if the multiplicity is 3 or greater, then it becomes very complicated. So I want to just show you how to do it for multiplicity 2 case. If you understand this, then the multiplicity 3 or more case should be easy to follow by watching other videos or other resources. Okay, so let's say lambda is the multiplicity 2 eigenvalue, uh, but there is only one eigenvector v. In other words, uh, other eigenvectors are just multiples of v. So, uh, you see, if you still find two linearly independent eigenvectors for this eigenvalue lambda, then there's nothing to worry about. You can solve it just like how you did it before. However, uh, if you don't find enough independent, linearly independent eigenvectors, then you're in trouble because you can only write down one solution. Uh, you, you write one solution as e to the eigenvalue times t times the eigenvector. But because this is multiplicity 2, what you need is you want to write two linearly independent solutions from this eigen, one eigenvalue lambda because it's repeated. So how do you get the other solution from this single eigenvalue? Well, one idea is to repeat what worked before. When you solved second order differential equations, uh, and uh, when the characteristic equation had multiplicities, uh, you just put an extra t to the previous solution, and that gave you uh, a linearly independent solution from the previous one, right? right? Uh, but unfortunately, this wouldn't work in our case because if you actually try to plug in to this equation y prime equals to a y, the left side, when you differentiate, well, every time you differentiate e to the lambda t, the chain rule says lambda t must be brought outside to differentiate, right? So you have e to the lambda t prime. Uh, the chain rule says think of this lambda t as just x e to the x differentiates e to the x, and then you have to bring the lambda t out, and then that lambda comes out, right? So this lambda comes out, uh, but when you differentiate this one, because this is a product of two things, you have to differentiate t, and then you have to differentiate e to the lambda, uh, causing two terms to appear. When you differentiate t, it's just this one, whereas if you differentiate e to the lambda t, again, the lambda comes out. Now, let's see what happens if you multiply a to both uh, to to get the right side, okay. So, what is a y? A y would be a times this, a times this, and v because it's an eigenvector. Being an eigenvector means a times v is equal to lambda v, and therefore this a v and this a v these will become lambda v's. And if you compare these two, you see that this is same, this is also same, but you have this extra that does not pair with the right side. So uh, you see right away that uh, this naive way of trying to find the second solution doesn't work uh, because of the product rule. All right, so what makes it work then? Well, uh, the, the trick is to not to give up, but see if you can add something extra to make it work. So. What you want to do is the modified idea is to add another vector w times e to the lambda t to the previous one and uh, my wish is somehow this can the derivative of this can cancel the unwanted part uh, but then this also creates some, something extra on the right side as well so uh, you probably have need this thing to create something just enough so that it's equal to this newly created right side term. Okay, So I just put this in into the y and differentiate. The previous derivative is exactly the same as before. E to the lambda t when you differentiate lambda comes out. right? And when you multiply by a both sides to see what happens. Again, a v is uh, lambda v. And here, uh, an important thing is that w has to be uh, linearly independent 
with respect to v because uh, if, if it is not then uh, this can be absorbed into here so you don't really get anything new uh, so you really have to assume that w is linearly independent of v and if that's the case because there is no other eigenvector linearly independent of v and still being an eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda we know that a w can never be equal to something times w that's uh, that's impossible okay so because this is not possible although we were able to rewrite a v as lambda v here a w has to be left as a w we don't have any choice okay so is that due? Well, no, because if you now compare the left side and the right side, you see that uh, other than these red ones, uh, these two agree, these two agree. So if we, if we set these red ones to be equal, then in other words, if this, this one is equal to these other two, then uh, the left and right side would be equal. Okay. And uh, that's okay because uh, we didn't really specify what W should be, so you can treat that as an equation for W and uh, make it as a way to investigate what our W should be. Okay, so let's see what we get if we set them equal. Uh, once you set them equal, you see that C2 and E to the lambda T are repeated, so we can just divide by them. So if I divide the C2s and if I divide the E to the lambda T's, then this is what you get. Uh, looks a lot simpler, right? And then you can move the lambda w to the left side and rewrite this uh, a, uh, rewrite a w minus lambda w as a minus lambda i w. Uh, see, lambda w is same as lambda times i w. And I need to write it like this because if you just do a minus lambda w, you can't subtract a number from a matrix, so that doesn't make sense. So, so this is what you get. All right. Now, uh, this is interesting because, you see, being an eigenvector, if you remember, being an eigenvector means that uh, this times v is equal to 0. Okay. So here, uh, instead of uh, this times w being 0, uh, this times w has to be v, which also satisfies this. So, uh, in other words, you have a minus lambda i squared of w being 0, because if you apply this once, then this is a minus lambda i v, and this is equal to 0, right? Because uh, if you apply this once, then you get the v, and then if you apply it twice, then because of this equation, you get 0. So if you see that, then you can kind of see that W is somewhat like an eigenvector, except that you need some higher powers of A minus lambda I to kill this W. So we have a new terminology, and this new terminology is called the generalized eigenvector. And uh, these are vectors uh, whose nth power of A minus lambda I uh, w is equal to v, where v is the eigenvector associated to eigenvalue lambda. And uh, this is really saying that uh, there's some higher power of, well, n plus 1 in, in our case, uh, higher power of a minus lambda i applied to w is equal to 0. So that's why it gains the name generalized eigenvector. Okay, so we see that from here, uh, W is a generalized eigenvector, and if you have a generalized eigenvector, that gives you a way to make the left and right side of this y prime equals to a v a y equal, right? And uh, that's basically it. So if I rewrite what we figured out so far, here's what we found. Uh, if you have a multiplicity two eigenvalue lambda but only one eigenvector, what you want to do is you write the second solution as vt e to the lambda t, but because with just these it's not a solution, you add something extra with a w which satisfies this equation. You want to make it so that a minus lambda i w is equal to v, right? 
and then that becomes a solution. All right, this may be too abstract for you to digest, so let's try an ex example, uh, explicit example, so that you can follow what we've done so far. So here's an example question. Uh, this is a system of linear differential equations where if you write down the matrix form, uh, the coefficient matrix has lambda equals to 2, 2, a repeated eigenvalue. And in that case, uh, we have to find the eigenvector first. Well, the eigenvector equation, as we said before, is uh, a minus lambda i. So you're subtracting lambda off the diagonal with a value of 2. So if we, we do that and then we multiply a, b equals to 0, this is the equation you get, right? And then doing a cross down, 0 times a, 3 times b, that gives you 3b equals to 0. So b is equal to 0, but a can be anything, right? And we choose the simplest one, uh, we'll choose a as 1. You can't choose a as 0, because if, you, if it's 0, comma 0, then it's a trivial vector that's not uh, considered as an eigenvector. So uh, the, the simplest number you can choose is just 1. Okay? Now once you find found v, uh, then you have to do a minus I, lambda i, times w equals to v to work. And for that, we have 0, 3, 0, 0, which is a minus lambda i with a, uh, lambda equals 2, and a become this vector. And then uh, you need this equal to v, which we chose to be 1, 0, right? OK, now let's multiply across down. So 0 times a, 3 times b. So you get 3b equals to 1. And therefore, b must be 1 third. Now, again, uh, it doesn't give us any equation for A, so A can be arbitrary. And uh, this time, although you can choose A as 1, and at the end of the day, uh, choosing whether A is 0 or 1 or 2 or anything gives you the same answer. So you really don't care, but I think uh, this time you want to choose A as 0. 0 is simpler than 1, right? And 0 is OK this time because it still is not a trivial vector. Okay, so we have this as our w, then since we have the v and w vectors ready, we can write down the solution. The solution must be, again, it's a c1v e to the lambda t, right? And c2v t e to the lambda t. And then uh, you have to add c2w e to the lambda t. So uh, this is w, that's v, that's v, okay? and uh, make sure that you have C2 and C2. See, this is a second order, not the second order, a system of two differential equations. Uh, because this is a system of two differential equations, you can at most have two free variables. So you can't put C3, it has to be just C2, okay? All right, and plus, uh, uh, in the previous one, lambda has multiplicity 2, so you can only have c1 and c2. If lambda was multiplicity 3, then you can have c1, c2, c3, but that's more complicated. I suggest you watch other videos or uh, online materials, read online materials to uh, understand what's going on there, okay? But here's what it is, okay? So that's the general solution. If I read off what x is, x is c1 times 1 times e to the 2t, c2 times 1 times c t times e to the 2t, and this is 0, so that does not exist. So that's what you have for x. And then y is c1 times 0 times e to the 2t, so it's this one, uh, c2 times 0. So that's also 0, 0, and c2 times 1 third e to the 2t. So that's, that's why it's this one, okay? All right, so that's the solution. And uh, I hope that this clarified how to handle the case when you have multiplicities in your solution.